Hi everyone, welcome to PlatformCon 2022. My name is Ralf Haag. I'm the founder and CEO of Logilica, and I'm here to talk about how to deliver products predictably using analytics, and in particular platform analytics. So first let's look a little bit into product delivery platforms and then what we can measure and how do we actually get to a predictable product delivery pipeline. So in our world, product delivery basically means having something that's developed um, and then operations being able to ship this. And whether you do this once or you do this in a more repetitive, uh, iterative process, so in any case, you want to be close early aligned to your business goals. And most of the business goals is having short iteration cycles so that what you can ship gets to the customer quickly. You can react to customer feedback and adjust the product. Um, at least if you are sort of in the modern DevOps, agile, CICD processes. And ideally, you have got the infrastructure in place to make this all happen. So that's the platform engineering side. So you can scale. Uh, you have a process that can be adopted by different groups, um, by different parts of the organizations. And you don't have to do this every now again from scratch totally, but you can rely on the infrastructure you build once and then you, that you roll out to your development teams. Now, in order to ship software, there's a quite a few steps in between, between us and the customers. So there's the planning cycle, there's, um, you have got your JIRA tickets, you have got the code creation, uh, you package it all up, and then you have got the security testing and release processes, give or take. And ideally, you want to have these processes as fast, reliable as possible and make everyone happy. This means, means making your own team happy so that there's not too many bottlenecks, too many frictions within that process, as well as making the customer happy by delivering the right stuff and delivering on time, obviously. But if you look into this delivery pipeline, there's a quite a few steps, as you already see. And in these two few steps, you typically have got a different types of tools and they all need to interact with each other. And you have the whole build pipeline for which you want to make sure that it's as efficient and fluid as possible. Um, for instance, you have got, as I said, you have got your ticketing system, then you have got your repository, the build system, the security checking tools, the release tools, and so on and so forth. Now, there's obviously a lot of different stages where things can go wrong. This could be sort of in specifications that are not well described. So your planning goes um, out of the window a little bit. You've got hiccups, hiccups in the development. Uh, the build server falls over or maybe you have got too many security issues. And in the product management space and in the engineering management space, you want to stay on top of all this especially now that we are working in much more distributed fashion. You want to see what's going on without every time logging into each individual tool. So really what people are looking for these days um, are engineering analytics platform that gives them all the data to see how the different teams, the different product pipelines are going and where the bottlenecks or maybe where some of the things uh, are that are falling over or lacking and going behind. So for this one, the new trend is to develop engineering analytics platforms that suck in all the data and then give you the radar level view about your whole organization in terms of engineering and product delivery. So how do we do this? The basic integrations typically come from getting the data out of the tools that you already have. Uh, most modern tools provide you with APIs, REST APIs, Web APIs, GraphQL, so you can easily or relatively easily get that data. Um, and then you want to suck in the data and build a platform that gives you some insights on top of this. So for instance, you want to look into the velocity of your delivery pipeline. You want to see what's your throughput or your release cadence. You also want to see where are the risk, where something stuck or let's say in the engineering side, maybe where people are burned out because they have got too many requests or too many issues tracking items on at the same time. Um, or there's sort of bottlenecks where you don't have enough people to review code. All of this information you like to gather, uh, create some charts around this with how they are tracking over time and also track KPIs around this. 
And when we're talking about tracking APIs, we don't want to track individuals because really software engineering is a team sport and delivery especially. It's more about the flow, the flow from product creation to actually shipping it out of the door. And when we look into this flow world, there's a few things that always come up. So it's like a river from the source going to the ocean. One thing is the velocity. So how fast can we actually move? And obviously, the faster we move, the more we can react to market demands, to customer feedbacks. Obviously, it comes with a risk. If we move too fast, maybe we don't do things thoroughly. We don't have the right quality or security baked in. Or when we do the velocity and the risk properly, we might not be able to deliver a lot. So the throughput is quite small. So we want to keep track of these, let's say, high level metrics and then see how we find a good balance that matches our business needs and the profile of our teams. And to get to that information, there's obviously different tools, as I mentioned, but there's also different stakeholders and different levels at the organization who look maybe a little bit slightly at different type of data. And it's quite important in our experience when we build this analytics insights around the whole organization to speak to the right stakeholder. For instance, when we just, let's say, talk about velocity, uh, for a software engineer, the velocity might be, how long does it take me to work through my PR until from when I open it until it gets reviewed and merged in? Or maybe from a, a DevOps platform side, how long do our builds on average take? How many build servers do we need? How well can we parallelize this? Um, the security team probably looks into more you know, how long does a scan take? Does the scan hold up the release process? For example, if we do, let's say, a daily release, but the scan time for the security team, because they're not looped in automatically, takes some delay before they get started and then they come back uh, two days later. So obviously that's a, that's a bottleneck and that's not great. And let's say from the product management side, people probably more look into, uh, let's say, high level KPIs, your issue lead time, how long does it take to get certain features done? How long does, me, does it take to get an epic done? And how long does it take to actually get the next, let's say, release milestone done? And then the whole thing, obviously, the velocity is from you know, inception to getting it out of the door, your release cycle. So depending on who in the organization you're really speaking to, they might be, have had a slightly different idea of velocity. And obviously they're all valid, um, but that needs to be taken into account. And so that's why it's quite important to deliver this information and the analytics back to the stakeholder that's most relevant. Obviously management always looks into this, but management needs also the backup information where it comes from and what's the, what you can do about it. And if you don't have that evidence that it takes long because let's say the build falls over every third time, um, then it's difficult to find sort of a solution to this as well. Another aspect, let's look a little bit into risk and some typical warning signals. So what we've uh, found out from, we looked at as a 30 odd thousand developers code, and this is a some project and it's a, not unusual where we mapped out how long do actually pull requests take uh, in the engineering for the engineering teams on average. And for this one, for example, there's the development time from starting to code until you open a, tick, uh, open a pull request. Then you have got the response time until somebody picks that up for review, how much time you spend in review and then integration. And as you can see in this example, most of the time is actually not spent in review. There's quite a few things that are spent a long time in development, which can maybe indicate that the features are too large or that the response takes more than two days or almost two days, 44 hours. Uh, why is that? Don't we have enough people? Maybe time zone play a role. And then maybe in the integration, when it takes long, it could be QA issues as well. So this is typically quite good information to align teams and say, hey, maybe we should have smaller pull requests. Uh, we need more reviewers and we need to distribute our work a little bit better and rearrange this. And then the whole pipeline will become much smoother. Similarly, I have got here a view around how do the pull requests flow through the system. Uh, we have got the different stages here from open to 
uh, reviewed, approved, merged in, and then closed. And sometimes you want to have, I mean, ideally you want to have this from left to right, but sometimes as you can see here, it's all over the place. And typically that's an indication that teams are overloaded or processes are not well defined, reviews are not getting done, and maybe the specifications are not well done and things are all over the place. Again, this is sort of something that normally it's hard to see, but using analytics and using data mining, you can get all this information out of there. And similarly, if you're more sort of on the uh, DevOps platform delivery side, you typically look into Dora metrics. So these are the Google initiated metrics about your delivery cadence, your deployment frequency, how long does it take for changes, and then what's the quality. So the time when something falls over to restore, and what's the percentage of those in terms of change failure rate. And again, these are similar like uh, flow concepts behind it, the throughput, how often, velocity, how quick, and then the risk around this. So now pulling this all together, um, you can actually define success criteria and deliver sort of insights to the right stakeholders. Let's say for the engineering team, they're probably looking more into velocity, how long does it an average take? What are maybe some of the outliers? And how do we track over time? So is this week better than last week? And typically when it leads up to some release, things that get a bit stressful and everything is out of shape a little bit, and then it kind of should normalize. However, when you see it's kind of not normalizing over time, then that's typically an indication that your processes are not well tuned and you know maybe you need to improve communication. Similarly, looking into DORA metrics, tracking this over time, you can easily see where your team fills, fits in. Are you one of those allied teams that can ship more than once a day? Or does it take you once a week or every couple of months that you're able to ship? And how often do you have issues? Uh, how long does it take to recover from those? And what's the proportion of these? And mapping this over time gives you a really good indicator first how you're doing, but also how you're improving and how where to improve and where to apply the right action and the right activity. So pulling that together really gives them um, um, the higher level view on how teams are operating, how our product pipeline is going and where we need to step in or where we really should celebrate how well we are doing. And then over time, you can build up in the organization some more maturity. You can come to pre more predictive models because you now, you know, it doesn't go up and down all the time. You have got a trend. You can see how long it's going to take on average. Um, you have got sort of different types of reporting. You can connect to map it back to a particular product or features. Uh, map it back to, let's say, the front end team, the back end team. And then from there on, you can scale out and really become much more predictable when next time you have got a new feature and you see okay these are as many these many tickets or these many story points and we already know on average we can hit these targets so it becomes much easier to predict the de delivery pipeline one word of caution and one thing i think that's quite important whenever you know we see we introduce data into organizations and also analytics Obviously not every data is always really perfect, but I think it's quite important to note that the trends are important. Um, and normally the outliers on let's say slightly unclean data kind of disappears in the noise and the trends are really becoming quite clear. And the alerts that you maybe get out of this when things go out of whack is also quite important. And secondly, I think um, all these data approaches need a team buy-in. Um, an open team culture is quite important and really sharing this and bringing this together and setting those milestones and those let's say goals as a team um, rather than being dictated down and as I said the more data you have and the more you connect it up um, in your much more mature organization the better you can also have this chain of evidence and it doesn't become just like an excel sheet with three three bullet points um, but you really have the connection between, let's say, how often does this happen, drill down, or oh, why is that the case, what, what are the outliers, and then bring this all together to have the high-level cockpit for the whole organization or the whole engineering organization. 
So with that one, a quick introduction into engineering analytics. I'm happy to stick around. I'm probably in the Slack channel and really looking forward to talking to you. Thank you very much.